Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This time I'm going to go over dual ISO, how to edit it, and how to use it. Let's get started. Getting started on the camera with Magic Lantern, this is a very easy setup. All you have to do is go into your Magic Lantern setting all the way on the left. You'll see down here, dual ISO. All you have to do is click that on. Um, right now it's set to 1 to 800. All you have to do, if you want to change that, is tap the display and then change it from... Uh, to whatever other ISO you want from 2 to 800. There's technically 16 and 32 and 6400 ISOs, but those are probably not very good. Even 800 is sketchy. Um, sometimes that can mess up quite often, so you might very well want to stick with 400 or maybe 200. Um, there's also this EV scale, um, which I don't know very well to be able to tell you what it actually means, like 6 plus. I don't really know. Um, oh, 3200 ISO. Um, but sticking with the ISO is probably the best bet. This is what your image will look like. It kind of brightened up, you could see, from what it looked like before. Um, one thing you have to take into account when you are recording with dual ISO is that you have to use way or you have to use your waveform and or zebras to expose because the image will look much brighter than it actually is. Um, that's one mistake I ran into with underexposing my image accidentally because of how it appears in the preview. So you have to pay attention to your waveform uh, to make sure you're not in pretty much all in the low. Um, and you have to use your um, zebras to make sure that you're not going to be going over. So pretty much ETTR and just kind of trust it. Similar to if you're shooting with log footage um, or in a log format, you have to kind of just trust your meter, even though it doesn't look correct because it's log. Um, similar with this, because in a way, this kind of is log. It'll make more sense in a moment when we go into MLV. So let's go ahead and do that, jump into MLV, and I'll show you what you do once you get your recording. All right, so now that we're in MLV app, this is what the image will look like before you do any processing. The first thing you're going to want to do is come over here to this dual ISO and turn that on. That will tell MLV app that this is a dual ISO image and be able to interpret it properly, resulting in a proper looking image. Um, that's pretty much about it that you're going to have to do. The one thing that you might want to do, because this is something I've noticed in my tests, is that there are these little dots that occur, and I think that they're just a byproduct of the process of how the dual ISO works. You can get rid of the majority of them by using the chroma smooth. So if you put that onto three, you may very well get rid of those if you notice those um, occurring. Um, I wonder if I can find any if I zoom in here on the image and just take a look around, maybe find one of them. It usually happens with solid lines. Oh, here's one right here. That kind of thing right here, these dots, those aren't normal. That shouldn't be there. But if we put on the 3x3, three three, okay, they stayed. They didn't get taken out. There's also a few dots here running up this. Those, like, purple dots, those aren't supposed to be there. Um, but sometimes the Chroma Smooth can get rid of those. Um... But otherwise, that's all you have to do. Um, that's the most that you have to do. Unlike me, I shot with an anamorphic lens, so I have to do the stretch. Um, and then I'll do my preset. I've started using BMD, the Blackmagic Design Film Preset. I'm going to explain that more in another video. Uh, amending and adding on to my airy uh, video. Um, but anyway... At this point in time, you are ready to export your video and 
uh, move into your editor, which for me is DaVinci. So let's pop over to that and continue this process. All right, here we are in DaVinci with the same exact uh, video clip that this one was as sent out as I want to say it was Black Magic. It was not. This one is Airy uh, Alexa uh, footage. Um, yes, it is. Um, so we slap our LUT on there so that it goes from the log to this, and boom, you pretty much have your uh, dual ISO. This one video clip isn't very good at showing, doesn't really do a good job, I should say, at showing the benefits to the dual ISO, you, though you can see if you're familiar with MLV files from the uh, EOS M that usually there'd be a decent amount of noise in here. Um, none whatsoever. It's a very clean image. Um, but I ha do have some files that I purposely made to accentuate the differences between using dual ISO and not using d dual ISO. So let's pop over to those and take a look at them. All right, so here we go. These are two identical clips uh, shot on a tripod. The only difference is that one was shot in generic 100 ISO and the other one was dual ISO with 800 ISO. Um, this is the 100 ISO image. Um, you can see kind of already that there's actually quite a bit of noise, especially if we look at the dresser here. There's quite a bit of noise going on but down here. No reason to Just all this. kinds of grody. Um, really not a good thing. This was exported as um, DaVinci, and then all that I did to it was... Um, <laughs> was um, apply the Rec 709 conversion and a little bit of an edit to make it look correct. Um, if we go over to the second clip, this one is the dual ISO. And you can see already possibly that it's just become quite a lot cleaner. And if we zoom in again 100% and take a look at that, almost no noise. There is noise, but it is significantly lessened. Um, I also have it set up to zoom in. So here's the 100 zoomed in, and then here's the dual ISO. You can see that that difference is pretty significant from that to that. Now, that is all to say this last clip here is the 100 again, but I put a little bit of noise reduction in it, just the basic noise reduction that DaVinci has built in. I do not own DaVinci though, so it's got the watermark, but you can see in it, if we pop over to it quick, uh, which will take a little bit from my computer, and it broke. Fantastic. Okay, problem solved. Okay, so what I was saying was with the 100 ISO, what you can do though is, especially if you own DaVinci, is use the noise reduction. Doing that actually cleans up the image pretty good. I mean, this is an extreme example of noise in an image. Um, if we pop that up, say, nah, brah, not today, and it's gone again. Dang it. Is it? Yes, it's gone again. Okay, and that's what you get. This is, this is what you get for having a NVIDIA GT630 instead of something competent. Hey, wait. No, I think it's gone. Okay, uh, we're just gonna pretend like it worked and I could show you what it looked like. Long story short, it cleans it up pretty well and makes the footage look all nice and pretty. And so within reason, you wouldn't necessarily need dual ISO to get a perfectly good looking image. With this one as an example, um, looking at between this and this, it's a lot faster of a workflow with the dual ISO um, because you then you don't have to use the noise reduction to get a cleaner image. But with the dual ISO, it tends to work well and glitch free, but you can run into some serious glitches um, from 
flickers to uh, lines through the image to full-on, like, crashes on the camera. The camera can, like, do this crash thing where it drops frames, um, which I've seen the most common of. Um, when I go to record something with the dual ISO on, it, it just pops up, you know, it records like one or two seconds and it'll pop up this thing of code saying that it was dropping frames. Um, I don't know if that's just has to do with this latest build or what of ML. I'm running the one from like October 10th of this year. So really, really recent build. It might have something to do with that. I don't know for sure. Um, but would I recommend using uh, dual like, ISO uh, within reason? If you want to give it a try and shoot some stuff for the kicks with dual ISO power to you, you might very well get some seriously good images, um, but not always. So I would say it depends on your situation. If you want to get good looking image at the cost of possibly losing said good image, use dual ISO. If you need to guarantee that you get the image, don't touch it because that might ruin your image. Um, that's pretty much all that I have to say today about dual ISO. Um, the next video I'm going to be making is, again, talking about using a different preset instead of the Airy. And I'm going to compare exporting as S-Log, the Airy Log C, and the Blackmagic Design Film and see all the benefits and drawbacks to those. So I hope you guys stay tuned to check that out. Um, I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.